Okay, it's in the chat. Um, just download the business admin guide. Um, it covers a wide variety of areas. What this business administration is all about? Okay, so that's the basics for Winchu. Um, so even in our, our upcoming classes, few classes, we are going to talk about business administration. Then we will go for customization. So before we jump into customization, write any code. Uh, get yourself familiar with this business administration. Okay, so. Part of the business administration is lifecycle. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm in my VM. Um, I just started Winchill Server. Um, do you guys know how to start a Winchill Server? That's the basic thing. Okay, so first you need to open uh, Winchill Shell. So if it is Windows, um, go to your start menu, type Winchill Shell. You'll have a command prompt looking up. This is a Winchill wrapper uh, on top of command prompt. So uh, it looks like command prompt, okay, but it will accept Winchill command. So when you start, when, uh, when you type Winchill start, it's going to start a, a server manager which is going to manage your method server, okay? So this is where all your uh, Runtime code will be executed. So any error you see in user interface will be logged here. And uh, if you want to see uh, the log files, okay, open your Winchell home directory. Uh, so usually, if it is Windows, it's going to be C drive, PTC, uh, Winchell, whatever version it is. And Winchell. I'll show you. My system is running very hard today. So once I move to it's running at 100 degrees, so it's a little slow. Okay, I pinned the home directory here. If you see C directory, PTC, Winchell underscore 12.1 and Winchell. Okay, this is your whenever someone says what is a Winchell home directory, this is your Winchell home directory. Okay, and from Winchell Home, you go to Logs. Okay. The recent one is your current method server log, okay. not the GC one. So. Open it, it'll have whatever you see in the method server. You'll also see that here. Dump. Still, it's coming up. So you have any issues uh, starting the image? I know if you, if you have some uh, issues, was in you are trying right trying to extract it. So you got any luck with that? No, Manoj, uh, it is not working. Did you down? So what is the issue you are facing? Uh, let me let me show you after the meeting. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Gayatri, still you have the same issue? Uh, I mean, a few, uh, it's getting downloaded, but uh, beside the few of few files, I'm getting into Mark. I don't know why I'm getting that. I'll take a screenshot. I'm currently outside right now. After going to my room, I'll take a screenshot and send that to you. Okay, sure. Um, so, Wasim or Gayatri, can you share uh, the downloadable link? Uh, to Mahesh, put it in the chat. Uh, so you also want to uh, download the image. Uh, just give it a try. You guys don't take much time. If it doesn't work, um, I will again zip the current image that we are running here and um, share it with you. Okay, so you have the current running image. So it's not up yet. So once it is ready, it will say method server ready. So we need to wait until um, it says method server ready. Actually, it won't take much time since my system is running very hard. It is having a lot of performance issue.
Till the VM comes online, um, I don't want to waste any time, so I'll use my uh, company's VM. Okay, this is Winchell homepage. So as you all know, so it's your host name slash Winchell. Uh, it will take you to the homepage. Okay, so usually will be provided either org admin or site admin. If you're org admin, you'll see this organization icon. If you're a site admin, you will see this site icon. Okay, let's go to the site and uh, go to utilities. Here you have two administration utilities. One is system administration. We will talk about this later. Uh, the one we are interested in is the business administration. Okay. Here we have. We are going to see all these topics. Not all. Uh, most of the topics. Okay. Today we are going to see about lifecycle template administration. Uh, so we talked about uh, the five business objects, the primary business objects: uh, WT part, WT document, EPM document change objects and links except links all four objects are lifecycle managed okay um, so we can track the maturity of a product let's take a path here um, i couldn't find a path let's go and search for a path also get uh, yourself familiar with the navigation. So if someone says, go to this product and go to this folder, uh, you should know how to do it, okay? So everything starts from here. If the product, uh, so this is a recent product that you accessed. If the product is not listed in the recent product, you have to click view all. It's going to give you the list of all the products that you have access to. If you're an administrator, you should have access to all the products, okay? Pick the one you wanted, okay? Um, usually, sometimes it will take to the information page when you click that. Okay, if you go here, it will go to the details page. So if you navigate to the folder now, if you click that, it will show up here, um, the recent products, then click folders. It's going to give you the list of folders available here. So I need to go here. The parts folder will have the list of parts. Sometimes uh, if it is the view is set to document, you won't see any part, but only the documents. Okay, you can filter the object inside this folder based on the type using this uh, views. Okay, we call it as a configurable table. Uh, let's go and take a part. <clears throat> you can also customize it. We will see it later how to customize different views. Okay. So at a given time, the table can only show 2,000 objects. So if there are more than 2,000 objects in this table, uh, it will say um, the query limit reached. So you have to click next to see load the next 2,000. OK, um, so the part is in verification state. If you scroll little down, you'll see uh, the different state available for this part. Um, so by looking at the state, we can see the maturity of the part, okay? Whether it's verification, it is released, or superseded, it's obsolete. So these state are custom state, okay? It was, it's, it's going to change, depends on the business requirement. But the life cycle is the one where you define the states and apply this life cycle to any business objects, which are lifecycle managed. For example, when I say lifecycle managed, what it means, only objects which are lifecycle managed, we can apply the lifecycle because if you take a folder, so in Winchell, everything is a Java object. Okay? If you're familiar with Java, you know what is object, okay? Folder is an object, link is also a Java object. You cannot apply a lifecycle to a folder because it doesn't make any sense why you want lifecycle for a folder, also for links, why you want a lifecycle for a link. So whenever uh, we, design this Java object in the source code, there will be a super class called lifecycle managed. If any object extend that lifecycle managed, we can apply lifecycle for that, okay? So, and mostly we'll be using this recently access. It's going to give you a list of object you recently visited, okay? 
So I need to go back here. When I create this part, it's going to apply this lifecycle. So here it says the lifecycle name, TBCT part lifecycle template. Okay. So today what we are going to see is we are going to create a basic and advanced lifecycle. We are going to see the difference between basic and advanced lifecycle. We're going to create a custom lifecycle and define some custom states and apply to a uh, part. Okay, that's uh, our today's agenda. Let's see if um, it's still coming up. Okay. By that time, we'll see uh, the difference uh, between a basic and advanced lifecycle. Okay. Go to your uh, lifecycle template administration. Sometimes you also need to make configuration based on the require business requirement. Uh, so any uh, tables or any uh, utilities you navigate, you always have the self help icon. Okay, it's a very useful uh, tool. So if you click that, it will directly take you to the help page of that utility. It will give details about everything you see in the UI, okay? Um, so out of the box, when I say out of the box, when we install fresh and chill, whatever you have, we call it as out of the box, okay? Out of the box, there'll be some, a few life cycles because every object need to be assigned to one life cycle. So um, out of the box, we'll have a few life cycles. And on top of that, we'll have our custom ones. So here we see uh, anything would start with TBCTs, or custom one. Okay, so it's at site level, we have defined our life cycle at org level. So that's very slow. So all these are uh, our custom life cycle. Okay. Let's create a new one, okay. Here uh, we see uh, basic and advanced, okay. Let me click here and uh, see what they've said about the basic and advanced life cycle. So basic life cycle, you can create a phase gate and transitions. Advanced life cycle, we can define access control policies and map to workflows. I'll show you what it is. Okay. So when you say uh, basic, I don't have any option to map a workflow to the life cycle. Okay. You all know what's a workflow. So workflow is used to automate any business process, okay? So that's where the magic happens. We'll see how to create a workflow and assign it. So let's create a basic life cycle. So I want to create a basic life cycle. Okay, this is my first state. See, all this access control rules are now disabled because my life cycle is basic. I can only define my transitions. I'll explain what is a transition, okay? So this is my first state. If you want to add more state, I want to click face, okay? Now I have three options. Okay. Let's uh, have a simple workflow. So in work, released, obsolete. So here I uh, have a list of state available. Um, some uh, business requirement will ask you to create a new state. Um, that we will see later. Um, so we'll have two sessions for our life cycle. So we'll see how to add custom state so we can make it available here, okay? Or if you have time, you can see it today.
so whenever i create a part first it will be in in work state okay later it will be moved to release state and finally if you retire the part it will move to obsolete so here uh, it will define uh, the state properties okay so versioning series um, i told you about revision and iteration out of the box we have mils military standard which is abc or numeric 1 2 3 if i select military standard then uh, my revision will be a.1 a b.1 and c.1 if you select numeric it will be 1.1 2.1 and 3.1 it can also customize this one but that we will see in our customization class okay for now i'll select military standard same thing here same thing here okay so in life cycle these transitions are very important okay so what is a transition let's say uh, let's take a part want to revise a part so revision makes a part move from b to c it will move to the next revision okay but i want to disable this action for some state for example if uh, the part is in obsolete state there is no reason to revise it right it's because we already retired the part so i don't want to give revise action when the part is in obsolete okay but when it is in release state i should allow the user to revise the part so now for in work and obsolete i'm not going to give uh, the revise transition but when it is in released they can revise the part to in work okay and also set state set state will directly change the state of the part so how the part is matured there are two ways either we can automate through workflow or we can directly use a set state option to move to different state and we can see different states okay. So from obsolete, I can do a set state to in work. Just we will see about these two uh, transitions for now. Okay. Now we need to give a name for our workflow. Let's see if. Okay. Let's just give it that's fine. test life cycle here we also have an option to specify what type of object uh, this life cycle should be applied uh, usually we won't customize uh, we won't configure till the object details level we will say wt object so we can apply this life cycle to any object we want okay save and close when i say save and close um, if i go to my have this workflow but the workflow is checked out um, so i need to check it in so my changes are inside the system until i check in so it won't be available for use <clears throat>
okay check um now how do we assign this life cycle to uh, any object okay that's where the oar comes into play it's object initialization rules we define oar for all the objects that we create in venture and that oar defines some rules whenever so the, the name implies object initialization rules so whenever we create or initialize an object what all the settings or rules we need to apply for that object for example uh, what is the numbering sequence for that object what is the team assigned to that object what is the life cycle assigned to this object okay now uh, we need to download uh, the already existing out of the box oar then we will make the change okay oar is also a uh, business administration entity we will have a separate topic to see about all the things that we can do with oar okay so if you want to define a new oar you need to click this one if you want to download a, a oar uh, so we are going to download a oar so if you see uh, recently accessed this is the one uh, which has the tbct uh, part life cycle assigned uh, let's download this. this is a tbct part it's the subtype of wt part so if you see the url it's still a wt part but it's a subtype I need to select the type of object for which I need to download the. Oh yeah. Just an XML file. So any data we load into Vincent is going to be the XML file. Okay. So this one specifies um, the numbering sequence. So we have a custom sequence called TBCT part. And uh, it also defines uh, a value for an IBA, THF category. So we'll see all this uh, in our OAR class, but the one we are interested in is the life cycle. Here it is. This is a tag. It specifies, <coughs> excuse me, what life cycle that we want to assign uh, for this object. Okay, it's, uh, it's a TBCT part life cycle. Now let's go and get the name. So, Apply the test life cycle. I mean, all these things, it's not required. Okay. 
Sí, tanto. I'm going to assign this for a specific product. See if I have an option to create a part. Yes. Okay. Let's go to utilities. As I told you, we can define uh, OARs, uh, ACLs, workflows at site level at org level, also at container level. So when I apply uh, an OAR at container level, this will be effective only for the objects that created in this container. Already have a OER for TBCT part. Let's see if we can. Okay, we'll update this so I can if uh, a OER already exists for the type for that context we cannot uh, create a new one so we have to update it since this one already exists um, I updated this now Let's try to create a WTE part, a TBCT part, and see if our change works. These are my custom IBS. So only the one with asterisks is mandatory, so others you don't need to fill. As you can see, now um, it has only three states and stuff, um, like the seven and eight uh, we've seen the previous TBCT part and it's following our test life cycle. If you see, uh, let's view this workflow. In work, I didn't enable a uh, revised transition. So if you go here and see this part, there is no revise option here. Okay. Since I'm an admin, uh, I see the set state. So if I set state to uh, release, see what happens. Now I'm changing the state of the object. Now the object is maturing. So that's what 
we are tracking the maturity of an object. So now it's an in work. Now I've done all my changes to this WT part, moving it to released. Now I see the revise option because for released, I enable the revise. So from here, I can revise from A.1 to new revision B.1. Okay. Now again, I'm doing a set state to absolute. So the part is retired, so it's moving to absolute. Now there is no revise option. So the only way to bring it back to invert is using set state. Uh, Manu, Manuj, I have a question. Yes. Uh, you see the revised checkbox at the in work, right? So, like, uh, it is giving me a sense that we can revise uh, when it is in in work. Uh, uh, no. So, what it means. Uh, I mean, uh, I see that uh, you can revise it when it's in release state, but uh, from the table, uh, from the I'll, checkbox. I'll tell you. So just okay. Hold on. okay. Now I'm moving it back to released, so it will enable the revise option. Let's focus on the state now. It's in released. Okay. Now I'm going to revise it. So it's C dot one. See the new state is in work. So this one says when I revise, what state it should go to. Because oh, when okay. we are making a new revision, it's not going to stay in release state. So it's a new revision, so it has to start from in work. So we can yeah. have the option to configure that. Yeah, now I got it. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Now it moved to in work. It's not in release state now. Um, usually when uh, people want to change the state, uh, since the state is the admin action, they use promotion request. Okay, so promotion request is the way to promote a part from one state to another state. Since we didn't enable the, promote, the promotion request option, let's enable it here and see how the promotion request works. Okay, now again, go back to our lifecycle, edit it. Okay, I'm going to enable promote in work to released. So what does, if you see the revise option, so from released, if I make from released, if I revise, it will go to in work so it's a single select okay i cannot have a multiple selection because when i do a revision it should end up in one state so that's why there is no multi select option here but if you say promote from in work i can promote to released and also absolute so it will give two options when you create a promotion ticket what state you need to promote to so some checkboxes are single select and some checkboxes are multi select here okay so let's save and close So ideally, promotion request is the way to promote your object. It's not set state. Set state is only for admins, but many companies use set state because it's simple. Okay. Um, so my changes are still not checked in. Check in. It's good practice to add comment. And if you want to see the previous iteration of this life cycle, what it is before this change, click right click and go to iteration history. Click this eyeball. It's going to give you the previous version we had. Click in progress. So we don't have any uh, transition for promote in in work. 
Okay, so now we have updated our life cycle. Will it make any change here? Now the object is an in work, the newly created object. Okay, will we see a promote uh, action here? No, because uh, the life cycle that this object follows is still the first iteration. Now it's in uh, iteration two. Um, this object still follows the first iteration. So how do we make this object to follow the new iteration? That's where we have this action called reassign life cycle. Okay. You want to make this object follow the new iteration. Okay. Use latest iteration of the current life cycle template. So we have different options here. And any screen you see, you always have the help icon to click and know about the details available here. Okay, so now I want to use the latest iteration of my current life cycle. I also have an option to select the template from the OAR. Okay, let's say I updated my OAR to make this part follow a different life cycle. So I can use the second uh, checkbox to make my uh, reassign life cycle to get the life cycle template from the OAR. Or I can manually select the list of uh, life cycles here. So I can pick whatever life cycle I want, but I want to use this. Still, if I want to use this, then this for the state, okay, preserve the current state or use initial state of the life cycle template. When I say preserve current state, let's say the object is in release state. When I say preserve, it will also uh, put this object in release state with the new iteration. If I say use initial state of the life cycle, what is the first state of that life cycle? It will follow that. Or I can manually pick the state. Okay, now I say preserve, uh, use initial state of the life cycle. Click OK. Okay, now... It's following the latest situation. So now we are in work. Now, if you see new promotion request. Okay. The object that I want to promote. Okay, you see the available state for promotion. This is coming from our transition because we select obsolete and released. Select, select object for promotion. And my state is, I want to promote it to released. Okay, well, this is it. The object is still in work. We have a new object called promotion notice. Okay. We'll have a workflow attached to it. I need to assign someone to approve. So someone needs to uh, approve or review this promotion request. So these are all tasks coming from my workflow. Okay. So we'll see about workflow in our next class. So this is not a out of the box uh, workflow. This is customized for my uh, company. It's heavily customized one. Let's see if my system comes back on.
Okay, this is a complex workflow uh, designed for my company for the promotion request. Usually, it will be a single workflow since it is a customized system. It's following this uh, custom workflow. So, so now it's an under review. You see, once I approve the task, uh, the state is automatically getting changed to under review. Um, so, most of the time, uh, the state will be changed using the workflow. Now, review promotion request. Since I assign myself as a reviewer, it's giving me an option to review the promotion request. So someone within the company will go here and see the instruction. Okay, so this is object is promoted from this state to this state. This is a promo promotion object, okay. It's in version C, okay. It's promoted from state, and we can also have a promoted to state, which state's going to promote to. And after reviewing it, I will add my comments and say confirm. Okay, let's promote the subject. Okay, review promotion request, and someone is to approve this. You see, uh, uh, this task has a little pen icon here, meaning it requires a digital signature. You need to enter, you call it as a digital signature. It's nothing but you have to enter your password again here. Use a different plugin. I'm approving it using a different user. So once I approve there, when this task will also change. Now it will be in approved state. So when we promote this, we have an option to send our details to SAP. So we don't want to do it. Okay. See here, my promotion request is approved and my path will change from inward to released. So this is the normal process how we follow um, uh, to promote an object. In next class, we are going to create a workflow. Hopefully, I'll fix my image by then. Um, and we are going to make this as a advanced lifecycle. So we'll have more option here. We are going to attach a workflow. And the workflow is going to do all the state changes. OK. Um, so today, try to download the image uh, because you need to have some hands on. It's not just uh, I do all the work. Um, the important part here is you should also have, need to have some hands on how to create life cycle. Um, all the things we've seen, so we have to try it. Okay, I have to make your hands dirty. So setting up an image is very key because the following class, you should also uh, parallelly do all these things along with me. So the muscle memory will help you to remember things much faster than going through this recording or uh, meeting. Okay. Any questions? Um, so 
I know it's it will be a li little overwhelming for you guys because uh, I navigate a little fast and this is the first time you're seeing all the screens. Uh, this is a uh, enterprise business application. It's not a, a, a simple thing that we can easily learn. So it will take some time. So that's why you have to keep practicing. Uh, yes, questions. Yeah, uh, Manoj, uh, bro, I have one question. Mm -hmm. So the major difference between the workflow and life cycle is like uh, life cycle is uh, where we define the stages, right? So like one so, stage to another stage in life cycle. It's state. Okay. State. You can say stages of the term. So the, the term is state. Yep. It is, there are two, if you see the definition, workflow is used to track the maturity of an object. Okay. At what state the object is currently in whether it's in design state or in prototype or manufacturing or release or obsolete, it depends on uh, the business requirement. We define all the states and it will tell you exactly where the part is, where the object is, okay? Now, if I go and see this uh, promotion request, it's approved. I can see the state of the promotion request, okay? It's approved. It's not mm -hmm. an under review. It's not an open. Okay. Now I know the state, the maturity of the promo. It's fully matured. It's approved. Yes. We go and see this. It's in release state. Okay. It's not no more in in works. The now the part have reached a release state. Okay. So that's what I mean by maturity. At what state of their life they are in. Now. Okay. The so this is life cycle. Okay, life cycle. Workflow is to automate a business process. Like we see in the promotion request, if I open this workflow, this is an instance of a workflow, okay? So my business requirement, my business processes, whenever someone tries to promote an object from one state to another state, someone needs to review the promotion request, someone needs to approve it, and also uh, the promoted object needs to send to a... Uh, SAP. I can manually type this program and do it, but here I'm automating the business process. Okay. When I create a promotion request, the first thing it's asked me to do is, okay, find your uh, reviewer and approver. That's the first task we, we completed. Okay. Then uh, it's going to uh, perform some uh, validation or invoke some API whether it is uh, right object to promote and it also going to set the state of the promotion request to under review. So we are not changing the state to automate. Once we assign the reviewer and approver, my uh, business processes to set the state of the promotion request to under review. Then based on a condition, so all this, the condition is nothing but we have Java API to verify a few things. We will see it in our workflow class and uh, it will lock the promoted object so we cannot edit it and it will review, it will give a task for me to review the promotion request. Whoever we selected here, they will get a task to review the promotion request. Once they reviewed it, okay, it's a valid promotion request, then it's going to send it to approve, but they also have a clarify loop because the reviewer, okay, find something uh, is not right. They'll say, okay, clarify, these are the questions I have. It's going to unlock it. It's going to uh, send it to a different task. I'll clarify promotion request. And again, it will come back to the same loop. Once he's happy with the promotion request, he will send it to the approver who's going to approve the promotion request. So this is my business process. This is how the flow should be. And workflow help us to automate this. Okay, from one stage to second stage. What, Whatever uh, you need. Okay, the, the, the business requirement is once the promotion request is approved before I promote my object, I need to send the part to my SAP system. That is also part of my so it's not just changing state. What should happen behind the scene? You need to send notification to someone about the promotion request approval. We can do it. See, it's sending a notification if there is a validation error. Hmm. It's state. It's also setting some attribute value. Set promotion date. It's invoking some APS behind the scene. So that's what automating a business process means. Okay. okay. It will take care of everything. Whatever you want to do, it will take care. Okay. We'll see all these things in our workflow class. That's also part of our business administration. Okay. And uh, the next question is like uh, OIR, right? So we have seen that uh, you know, object initialization rule. So, so that can be applied uh, uh, across uh, the lifecycle workflow and 
on every object no, OER, that can OER tells what life cycle your object should be assigned to. And your life cycle said what workflow you need to invoke in a specific state. Because if we say invoke, we, so we call it as a face gate. This is my face. This is my gate. Okay. Um, uh, in, in a pure textbook definition, this is, let's say I'm doing my design work here. Okay, so using some workflow. I can assign a workflow here in, in work. So I'll design it. I'll send it to my approver. He's going to review my design. He's going, to, if he's not happy, he's going to send back to me, which I can achieve through a workflow. And once I'm done with my work, the gate will hold the validation criteria to move it to next state. Okay, even in my gate process, I can assign uh, a workflow. See, the gate process also has an option to assign a workflow, but 99% of the companies won't use the gate process. So you don't need to worry about the gate process. So here, my life cycle tells if it is an in work, what workflow needs to be invoked. If it is released, what workflow needs to be invoked. If it's obsolete, I can configure, but most of the time, they will assign one workflow in in-work and uh, uh, that workflow will handle all the stage change and everything. You don't need to assign. But if you want to uh, split your workflow into three parts and assign it to individual state, yes, you can do it. I'll also show an example for that. Um, but there are some use cases where uh, we'll only apply the workflow to the first state. That is very important. So the workflow kicks off and the object is created. So two, three different things. OAR is separate, lifecycle is separate, and workflow is separate. It all works together. That's how we configure a system. So OAR is more like pre what all rooms, right? yeah, pretty different. What should happen to my object when it gets created? What's the name? What's the number? Do you want to populate uh pre-populate attribute value? If you change this, do you need to change something? Okay, if I change my one of my attributes, do you want to change something else in the system? What is the team needs to be assigned? And whether it's a server generator or user can also, enter. for example, I can give an option for the user to enter the number or it can be a auto-generated one. So we'll see that in our OER class. There are a lot of things we can do in OER. You cannot cover all those things here, but we'll see in OER class. This is only for lifecycle, what you can do with lifecycle. The OER and workflow will come here. Okay. So there are, uh, since we are going in a fast track, so we have an option to customize our version series. What is mean by customizing a version series? So now I revise it, it's go from A dot one to B dot one and C dot one and D dot one. Some company will have a, uh, a revision sequence of A, 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 B, A, C, which is not available in our system out of the box. How we implement that, which is not, we are not going to cover that because we need to concrete it this as soon as possible. Uh, but anytime if you have a requirement, if you're working on a project, if you have some questions, okay, this is my requirement, how to do it? You can always get back to me give you a requirement, I'll tell you the best way to do that. There are multiple ways we can do things in Venture. Okay. So what's the best way? That's what you're going to know. But these are some basic things. And this help is your companion. Click it. It will give details about everything. How to customize a version sequence. And also, I'll give you one common login for the PDC knowledge base. Um, you can type anything there. Okay. I'll show, quickly show you support.ptc, you need a PTC login for this, okay? Here you have a question, okay? My question is how to customize version sequence. how to get or update file based state based it will give you 
so you need to first download it then this is how you load it and what is the command you need to follow changing versioning schema so it will take you to, to the help center how to do it setting a file based or state based versioning sequence so all these things you can find in this uh, help center okay Any other questions? And uh, go download the PDF that I sent you. Okay, go through it. Um, it will be uh, whatever we talk. They will explain in a very detailed manner with all the example. Okay, but go through it in your free time. It will help you. If you don't understand anything, just let me know. Yeah, sure. And. Uh... I have one more like check in and check out, right? So, uh, if you want to do any modification, so first we need to do check out and then we need to check in, right? So, so does it give any notification? Like, suppose I have a uh, check out, you know, like today to edit something, but you know, I forgot like uh, for two, two, three days. So, will it give any notification to me, like a particular nope. part or? Nope. If you go to your home screen, you will see. The checked out work. Oh, okay. so every designer will come here, see what all the objects he checked out, and he will work based on that. Oh, our day to day task from here in this dashboard. This is your checked out work, and this is your task. Okay. So, any task assigned to you will be available here. These are workflow tasks. Mm -hmm. Let's say I want to approve a promotion request, I want to review a promotion request. So all these tasks will be available here. Cap mm -hmm. request review. Okay, these are workflow tasks. This is my day-to-day -day task and this is my checked out work. Okay, so if I... Uh, let me see this. Okay, if I say if I subscribe to this part, let's say, uh, so any event happens on this part, like check out, check it, uh, revise, you'll get a notification that will be available here to the updates. Still, you can add additional things here, whatever you want. Let me go back and uh, change my... Oh yeah, so set this back to what it was. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. Uh... Yep. Good, man. Yeah, actually, I have a couple of questions from the past yeah, yeah. videos. So, uh, in the, you know, while creating the users, so if suppose I got a request, like uh, we need to create a new user. So how will come to know? So that particular user, which group does we map? Uh, so we'll get everything in the request. So first, uh, we need to assign him to one of the license group. Okay, depends on... Uh, the requirement okay whether he's a designer or uh, mm -hmm. what role he plays in the company we will assign him uh the license role so he can create part or he can do a bomb transformation or he can create a promotion request okay but assigning him to a license profile doesn't mean that he will have access to all this part to get uh, access to this products every product will have a team he need to be added to this team so he have access to this product. Again, what role he plays, according to the role here, we will assign it. So usually we don't directly assign uh, people to this role. We will assign it to group. When we create uh, the user, okay, he is from this location, uh, from a manufacturing team, okay, give this, add him to this group. So which automatically give access to all these products. So we don't need to manually add them. Okay. See this group. 
as these many members who are a part of this group will have access to that product. And when we create the user uh, based on the training he completed or the role he play, we will map him to license profiles and also the custom groups. And automatically he will have access to all the products. Okay. So these tasks will get through service now or like... Uh... Yep, like, we get yep, we get a service now ticket to add uh, okay. new users. Or someone uh, joins the company, uh, they will default have a process to create a virtual account, and based on the training they complete or role they play, they will be added to different accounts. But there is all, mostly it will come through service now ticket. Oh, okay. My system temperature is spiky. And in the document sections, we have something called internal names. So you mentioned that we need to start with ext dot something, the name, right? So what does internal name means? Because it's not taking direct names over there. So internal name is a unique name, okay? Display name, you can have whatever character you want or can have duplicate same display name for two different objects, but internal name should be unique. If you see, uh, in our current system, We have two uh, different subtypes, but both has the same display name, product change notice. Hmm. You can have the same uh, display name, but if you see the internal name, this is ext.tbct.tbct product change notice. And this one, ext.tbct.tbct product change notice new. I cannot have a same internal name for uh, both the types. So how do we differentiate it? That's why we have this internal name everywhere. Whatever you create, everything will have an internal name. So it has to start with the EXT only or? Uh... Not necessarily. That's a naming convention everyone follows. Uh, in the organization, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. We see uh, even for uh, attributes, will have an internal name and a display name. So display name is what the user see in the UI. Internal name is for a unique identifier to uh, locate the type. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, last question. Mm -hmm. So, in the real time, uh, we'll have an admin access too, or uh, that will be yes, given to the specific. Have a, you will have admin access because. Uh, if you are applying for any role, you'll be an administrator or a developer. Uh, you'll be part of the Winchell team, okay? Winchell support and development team, and anyone part of the Winchell support team will have admin access, unless your server is hosted in uh, PTC Cloud, where you will have only org and you won't be provided with site admin for QA server and production server, but development server you will have uh, for this one. Uh, so my our servers are hosted in. Uh, PTC Cloud. You see, I have Arc Admin. This is one of my development box. I have Site Admin. If I go to my uh, QA, I'll have that only... is on, hosted on Windows or Linux. Linux. So I told you right. All mm -hmm. the QA and production servers will be in uh, Linux. Linux. Okay. This is our QA box. <clears throat> I only have our government. I don't have site admin access. Okay. Okay. And last question. So at the same time, like, uh, you know, uh... Yeah, like two developers are working on the same thing. So how the request will be uh, routed, like reference will be given. 
like first come first some first serve kind of thing Um, it's not first come first out. Uh, so it depends on your uh, expertise. Uh, let's say you are very good in uh, UI customization. If something comes up for UI, so you will get that. Um, okay so most of the companies follow the agile. So you will have a scrum master and a product owner who will create stories, depends on the requirement, and uh, they will assign it to you. Or you can pick, so in, When I was working for John Deere, it's we go and pick the stories. Here they will assign it. Okay. No. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, folks, any other questions? Okay. Then thanks, everyone. See you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye, thank Bye, you. Mama.